Hello Floater friends, uh, I'm introducing a short video um, of an evaluation, not an actual treatment, but uh, it does a good job I think in explaining the dilemma of evaluating younger people with floaters. And uh, if you're not familiar, the problem with using a YAG laser to treat younger people is that their floaters are very often very close to the retina where they're not safe to treat. And this is a little bit of a switch on that where the patient did have some um, uh, loose and diffuse cobwebby strands closer to the operator, you know, just behind the lens. And in fact, I had previous treatment elsewhere with one of the experienced physicians uh, and had no improvement. So patient, full of hope and optimism, decided to come and see me. I saw this stuff, but as I moved my shift and my focus further back, I found what I think is the actual culprit. So uh, I'll have a little comment afterwards, but let's get to the video uh, right now. So. Um, right now I'm focused on the back surface of the lens and I push it back just a little bit. We have this cluster of stuff right there. If that shows up. And yeah, maybe that on the other side. So this is retrolental. This is just behind the lens. Uh, this little network of kind of hazy little cobwebs and strands. Uh, and hopefully it's showing up there. Um, I don't think that that is the target. Um, that may have been the target of previous treatment elsewhere. But I don't think that's the problem. Because uh, now the hard part is pushing the focus further back. We're going to go back to the retina. There's our optic nerve. And we'll, there's the left eye, so we'll slide over to the right and get intimate with the uh, fovea and just in front of hopefully these will show up there but just in front of our I'm going to retroilluminate that there's a little density there and another one just to the side of that I mean these are micro microscopic so it looks like there's a little line kind of connecting them, and that's just what I can see. There's probably, and there's a little linear line there. Probably not going to show up there. But to give you an idea on video here is those are our little densities, and when we swing back over to the optic nerve for reference, the diameter of that optic nerve is about one and a half millimeters. So when we swing back over here for reference, uh, these are, well, where did they go? Pretty, oh, there they are. Very microscopic little densities, but um, sort of visually taking that one and a half millimeters and flipping it towards me, a virtual you know measurement reference, these things are just literally sitting on top of the retina. So they're probably a tenth of a millimeter away uh, from the retina, anterior, posterior, and positionally they're probably a half a millimeter from directly overlying the macula. Uh, oh, and there's more over here. A little bit more, a little cluster of stuff over here. So this was my concern. So uh, when you said you've been previously treated and the doctor said, well, I see stuff, that's you know, plenty of, it's kind of out in the periphery, it's plenty of, that's what this junk is. And as tempting as it is to go after that, that I don't believe is really the problem because it is very, very anterior. And like I've described earlier, uh, the optics of it is the stuff that's furthest away from the retina is less likely to be bothersome. I mean, I mean, this stuff, could you be aware of a little bit of shifty something? Maybe, maybe, maybe. But um, those little densities there, probably still there, even when you mildly dilate. Um, this patient's been using some atropine, and you know, he, he dilutes it down further. Um, so he's getting a mild, mild effect. All right, so hopefully you were able to see that on the video. Um, looking into the eye, there was a lens right behind that, that little nest of material there uh, that I believe the other doctor had treated without any subjective improvement uh, per the patient. Uh, and moving that focus further back near the retina, that's where we see those little specks and those little dots. They are literally a, a fraction of a millimeter right in front of the retina, right in front of that central part of the vision. So I get it, you know, they're very, very bothersome. I just have to make good decisions and good recommendations. And as much as I am motivated to treat, as I, uh, as much as I make more money when I treat than when I don't, um, I believe that making good decisions and good recommendations is why I'm still in this game. 16 years on, 
uh, exclusively treating floaters, an impeccable reputation out there, uh, all five-star reviews uh, when you look those up. So, uh, and this is also underscores the importance of why you need to find somebody with experience. Um, the local doctors who kind of dabble with laser treatment might treat that, might bring you back for a couple more treatments. Um, they're just not gonna deliver the, the goods. They just don't have the experience. Um, this younger group of people that suffer these floaters that are often close to the retina, they actually are very good candidates for the use of low-dose atropine. So I, I do that as well within my practice. I have that custom compounded and I do Zoom meetings to establish a doctor-patient relationship. I mail it out to you about a, you know, about a month, a little over a month's supply of that. You get to try it out there. And if it's working for you uh, and it's mitigating those shadows and reducing your awareness of the floaters, um, then win-win. You know, you can just order more and, and, and it's very, very safe to use. I'm very, uh, very comfortable mailing this out to people because there's just really nothing that it can do to harm the eye. So uh, that's worth considering. Uh, I would do that first before you buy a ticket and come out and see me. I'll be glad to see you. But uh, if you are under the age of 30, 35 or so, it's very, very unlikely. It's very statistically unlikely that I'd be able to treat you with the YAG laser. So uh, maybe try the atrophy first. Anyways, hope you learned a little something. Um, and I was able to video these floaters, which are kind of unvideoable, uh, very, very hard to, to visualize. Uh, but it just kind of underscores like that's the stuff that we're dealing with with the younger patients. All right. Uh, stay safe out there. And if you have any comments, comment below. Thank you.